Hello everyone. Shut up, human. Uh, sorry about that. That is just my computer. I taught it how to speak using JavaScript just a little bit ago, and uh... I can introduce myself. No, I think that's fine. I can do the... Welcome to Skynet. So it looks like my computer finally shut up, which means I can tell you about today's video sponsor, Atlantic.net Hosting. And they're giving you an entire year-long free trial of their servers, and these are powerful servers, even more powerful than the server I host my own site on, and you're getting it for free for an entire year. On top of that, they have incredible data reliability and redundancy, so you know that your data is going to be there and secure, and you can also set up automatic backups if you want. On top of that, you're going to get an additional $50 worth of credit if you use the code KYLE when you check out, so make sure you use the link down in the description below to get an entire year-long free trial. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Now, as you saw in the beginning of the video, I taught my computer how to speak using only JavaScript. And as you can see, we can type in any text we want over here. For example, JavaScript is what lets me speak. And then if we click play, JavaScript you're going to hear it speak, speak back to you. So, and it's going to work. We can change the speed. We can make it really fast, for example. JavaScript is what lets me speak. And it's going to speak much faster. And if we bump that back down to one time JavaScript speed, we can pause it in the middle and you're going to see it's going to stop. And then we can resume from there. We can use stop to just completely restart our plane and do so much more. So I'm going to show you exactly how to build this so you too can have a really annoying computer that talks to you. So to get started, we're going to need an index.html file. This is just going to be so we can actually show our stuff on the page. Hit exclamation point and tab. This is going to give you this boilerplate code. And inside of our body, we're going to need this really big text area, as well as these different inputs and buttons down here. So let's start by creating a text area. And inside of this text area, all we really want to do in here is give it an ID of text. This is just so we can select this in our JavaScript. And then next we want to work on this bottom section. So we're going to have a label. And this label is going to be for a particular input, which we're going to give an ID of speed. And we're just going to give this label a text of speed. Then we're going to have an input. This is going to be a number input. And for this number input, we're going to give it a name here of speed. And we'll just give it an ID of speed as well. And let's make sure we specify a minimum, which we're going to say is 0.5. We never want this to talk slower than one half speed. And we're also going to set a maximum, which is going to be three. And we're also going to set the step. This means that when I use the up or down arrow on my keys, this is how far it increases. And as you can see, we have that set to 0.5. That way we can change this by 0.5 increments if we want. Lastly, I want to set a default value to be equal to one, just so when you refresh the page and load, this is going to be set to one by default, which is just the normal talking speed, which is exactly what we want. Now we're going to have a few buttons down here. This first button here is going to be for plain. And in order to select it in our JavaScript, again, I'm going to give this an ID. We're just going to say play button. Copy this down a couple times for our pause button, as well as our stop button. And let's just make sure we label these as pause and stop. Now, if we save this and we open this with live server, you should see we're going to have something somewhat similar to what we have over here. We just have a few changes to the sizing of this text box, as well as where our different elements are placed. So. To do that, we're just going to put a simple style tag here inside of our head because we're going to use really basic styles. I just want to select the body, change the width here to 90%, and I want to change the margin to zero and auto. This is just going to center all of our content in the middle and give us a little bit of padding on the sides, 5% on each side. And then I want to change our margin on the top to be one REM just to space our content out from the top of the page. Now let's select that text area, which we gave an ID of text. And all I want to do in here is change the width to 100% and the height to be 50 VH, essentially 50% of the height of my screen. And that gives us the exact same sized box between these two elements. And now, as you can see, all of our styling and HTML is done. And we can move on to the fun part, which is the JavaScript and actually making this talk back to us with whatever we type inside of it. So let's create a file called script.js. And let's make sure that we import that here. So we're just going to have a script tag with a source attribute, which is just our script.js. And just make sure you put the defer keyword here. This is going to make it load after all of our HTML is parsed. 
And now if we save that inside of our script, we can do whatever we want to make our page talk to us. Now, the very first thing that I want to do is select all of the different elements that we gave IDs. So for example, we can select our play button and we can just say document dot query selector, or actually we can just do get element, whoops, get element by ID. And we just want to get the ID here, which is going to be for play button. Copy this down because we have a pause button, which is going to be exactly the same. And we also have here a stop button, which is going to be exactly the same as well. We can copy this down a couple more times because we're going to have our text input as well as our speed input. And this text input just has the ID of text and speed just has an ID of speed. So now we have all of our elements selected so we can actually start adding event listeners to these. And in our case, we really want to have an event listener on the play button first, because that's what I want to focus on. So we can say play button dot add event listener. And we want to add an event listener for whenever we click on this button, we want to play the audio that is inside of our text input. So to do that, we're going to call a function just called play text, and we're going to pass it in our text input dot value. This is whatever is typed into our input here. So now let's create that function, which is just called play text. And we know it's going to take in a text that is going to play. And in order to play things and have your computer speak to you, we're going to be using an API called the speech synthesis. And this is going to allow us to actually speak. And in order to make our speech synthesis speak, we're going to need something called an utterance, which is a speech synthesis utterance. And this essentially specifies how fast you speak, what text you're speaking, what the voice that is actually being spoken, all of those different things are specified by this utterance. So let's create a new speech synthesis utterance. We're just going to specify here our utterance is equal to that. And we can just pass in our text here. And that is going to be what our utterance is going to speak. Now to specify the speed of our utterance, we can just come in here and say utterance dot rate. This is going to be the speed. And we want to set that to our speed input dot value. Or we're just going to default that to one if our speed input value is null. And let's make sure this is a capital I up here for speed input. I just had that spelled wrong. Now what we can do is call speech synthesis dot speak. And all we need to do is pass in an utterance. So we can just pass in our utterance here. And this should speak out our utterance to us. So let's save this. And we're just going to type in hello world. And if we click play, hello world, you hear that it speaks back to us. Hello world. We're just going to copy this hello world a couple times. And if I click play, hello world, hello I can actually world, modify world. this text while it is speaking, which is obviously bad. So in order to prevent that, we want to make sure we disable our text input when it is speaking. So what we can do is right before we speak, we can take our text input, we can take the disabled property, and we can just set this equal to true. Now what's going to happen is if we type in some text and we click play, you can see that it has disabled our text box while it is playing. But of course, now our text box is disabled and we have no way to re-enable it. So luckily, this utterance has an event listener that tells us when it's done speaking. So we can just say utterance.addEventListener, and we want to add an event listener called end. This is going to be whenever it's done speaking, it's going to call this function. And in this function, all we want to do is take our text input, and we want to take the disabled flag, and we want to set it to false. Now if I just put in some text, hit play. Hello. You can see that it plays back to us, and as soon as it's done, it undisables itself, so we can change this, and then hit play Hello again, world. and you can see that it works exactly as we want it to. So now let's work on our pause functionality next. Let's select our pause button. We want to add an event listener for whenever we click on this, just like we did with our other, and we want to call a function called pause text, just like that. So let's create that function, pause text. And inside of this function, all that we want to do is take our speech synthesis and actually pause it. So we can say speech synthesis dot pause, just like that, call a function, and it is going to pause our speech for us. One thing we want to check first, though, is to make sure we are speaking. So we can just say if speech synthesis dot speaking, which is going to return true if we're currently speaking, then we want to pause. Otherwise, don't do anything, because if we're not speaking, we obviously don't want to pause. Now, if we save that, we type in something like, hello world, this is me. And if I click play, hello then pause, is you can see that it has paused itself. And then if I click play again, 
it's not actually doing anything. So what we need to do is make sure to modify our play function in order to resume our speech if for some reason we are paused. So in order to do that, we can say if our speech synthesis, whoops, speech synthesis dot paused, if that is true, then we know that we need to actually unpause. And we also want to check to make sure that we are speaking. So speech synthesis dot speaking, because anytime that we have text that we still need to speak, this is gonna be true. And if we're currently paused, this is gonna be true. So essentially, if we have text that we still want to speak and we are currently paused, then instead of creating a new utterance, what we want to do instead is just to take our current speech synthesis and we want to resume it. So we're just gonna say resume. And we're just returning here, which makes sure that we don't actually start a new speech afterwards. So now let's save that. And we're just gonna do a text, hello, whoops, world, this is me. I'm gonna click play, then pause. And you're gonna notice it didn't actually play at all. And the reason for this is because we are currently paused right now. If I just come in here and inspect our source, go into our console and type in speech, synthesis.cancel, this is going to reset everything. We're gonna handle this later with the stop button, but for now, I'm just gonna do this manually. And now if I click play, Hello, world, you're gonna hear it actually is playing properly. So now if I click Hello, play, world, then pause, you can see it pause. And if I click me. play again, it's going to finish off with the last word of me. You can Hello, try that again. World, you can see we got that far, this click play me. again, and it's going to finish out. So now our playing and pausing is working as we expect. But now let's actually implement this cancel, which is going to be our stop button, which essentially says just quit out of everything. So in order to do that, what we need to do is add up another event listener here for our stop button. We want to make sure this is going to be on click. And we're just going to call this stop text. Whoops, just like that. There we go. And now let's create that function called stop text. And all we want to do is just take our speech synthesis and we want to just cancel this. And one thing that we also want to make sure that we do is in order to unpause our text, let's say that we play, then pause, then stop, we're still going to be in that pause state, which you noticed actually broke our code earlier. So in order to get around that, we can just say speech synthesis here. Whoops, speech synthesis dot resume. This is going to take us out of the pause state and then immediately cancel. So that way, essentially, it's just going to reset us at a completely fresh slate when we go into this play text functionality to replay. So now if we save that, type in some text, we'll say, hello world, this is me again. Click hello. play and then stop. You can see a couple of these stops. Click hello play, world, then pause. Is... And then we actually come and click stop and click play hello again. World, You're gonna see me. it starts over completely from the beginning, which is exactly what we want. And it does everything perfectly, which is exactly what we want. And we can even change the speed to two, for hello, example. World, this is me. You can see it speaks twice as fast. But one problem, if we just duplicate this a couple times, is that if we click play world, and then change our world, speed, hello, world, it doesn't actually do anything while it is speaking. So we need to set up some more event listeners in order to modify our speed as we're currently speaking. So that way, if we change the speed, the text is going to slow down or speed up accordingly. Now doing this is a little bit trickier than it may seem. You may just think we update the rate in our utterance and that's going to fix our problem. But unfortunately, once you start speaking, updating your utterance actually doesn't do anything. So we actually need to stop our speech and then restart it at the current position that we're at. And luckily, we can do that pretty easily by using utterance.addEventListener. And we want to add an event listener called boundary. And what this is going to do is give us an event right here. And this event is going to fire essentially every single time we get to a new word that we want to speak. So it'll be, for example, when we speak hello, when we speak world, when we speak this, every single time we're going to reach a boundary and this is going to get called. And there's some specific properties in this boundary. For example, this E has a thing called a char index. This is essentially the index of the exact character at the very beginning of the word. So for example, if we're saying hello here, our char index is gonna be zero since it's the first character in our string. While if we're speaking W for world, our char index is gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So then we know exactly where we are inside of our string based off this char index for exactly what word we're currently speaking. So if we're speaking the word world, then we're going to have an index of six. If we're speaking the word hello, our index is going to be zero. So we can actually save this index. I'm just going to call this current character. This is just going to be a global variable, which I'll set up here just like that. And what this is going to be is the current index of the character that we're speaking the word of at that exact moment. 
That way, when we change our speed, we can restart our text based on that exact current character. Also, we're going to need to take this utterance and move it outside of this play text function. So I'm just going to take all of this utterance stuff, I'm going to move it out of here, and instead of having our rate be set here, I'm going to move that down inside of our play text. And instead of specifying our text here, I'm just going to specify it here, where we say utterance.text is equal to our text. So now our specific information, such as the speed and the text, is set inside of play, and all of our global information here for our actual events are set outside of our play. That'll just make it easier to work with. Now what we can do is take our speed input, we can add an event listener on input. This will be fired every single time that we actually change our speed input. And what we want to do here is essentially stop our current text. So we can just call stop text. And then what we want to do is resume playing our text at the exact character index we're currently at. So we can call play text. And in order to get the exact text that we're currently playing, we can just say utterance.text. This is our current text. And we want to get a substring of that text, which starts at our current character. Essentially, if we pass in here the index of three, this is going to get the character index at three, so zero, one, two, three. So it would start at LO and then go from there. Same thing if we passed in, for example, six, it would get from the W onward and all of the characters after that. So that way, if we change our speed while we're talking, it's going to essentially restart our speech at the exact word we are currently speaking in and then continue speaking from there at the faster or slower speed. So let's save this and just make sure what we did actually works. So we can say hello world, just like that. And then let's click play. Hello world. Okay, that worked properly. Let's copy this a couple times just so we can see what happens if we change our speed. Let's hello click play, world, hello, we'll hello reduce world, our speed. Hello world, and you can see it restarts world. and goes slower. And then let's, for example, do a similar thing. We hello click play, world, world, bump it up to world, two. Hello world, hello world. And you can see that it drastically increased the speed that we were speaking at, and it did that live as it was speaking. It just had to re-speak the word that it was currently on. Now, one last thing that I want to do is inside of our play text, I just want to put a simple if check here that says if speech synthesis dot speaking, I just want to say if we're currently speaking, just return. Essentially, if we're already speaking, I don't want to restart our utterance from the beginning. So if we click the play button twice in a row, I don't want to have some weird stuff happen where it's speaking twice over top of itself. I just want to exit out of our function and pretend that nothing at all actually happened. And that is all it takes to make your computer speak to you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.